Did you know? Thursday is World Milk Day uh, when the UN Food and Agriculture Organization celebrates the dairy sector. I and mean, it comes at a time when the industry is facing uh, a new challenge, the soaring popularity of plant-based alternatives. Uh, here's Charlotte Parsons to start us off. 5 a.m. in London. No sound but the birds. No one on the streets but the milkman. We deliver all types from your regular full cream, semi-skimmed, skimmed. We also do organic milk. Um, again, same varieties. Peter Bircham has been doing this job for 40 years. The British milkman with his traditional glass bottles has been around for nearly a century and a half, a rare constant in a fast-changing world. But change is coming to the dairy industry as concerns over health, animal rights and the environment fuel a rise in sales of non-dairy milk substitutes. And nowhere is this change more apparent than in places like this. It used to be that when a barista asked you what kind of milk you wanted in your latte, they meant full fat or skimmed. Today, they're offering almond or oat, soy or coconut, and more and more people are choosing those options. Roughly about five people out of 10 ask for dairy-free alternatives. And if you compare with around three to five years ago, it has increased quite a lot, as uh, probably about one in 10 people used to order dairy-free alternatives. Nearly half of British adults consume plant-based alternatives as part of their diet, drinking $125 million worth of them in a year. And that number looks set to rise. 46% of Brits say they're thinking about reducing their intake of animal products in the near future. But that doesn't mean cow's milk is being put out to pasture just yet. 52% of people still consume it. Uh, obviously breeding of cows isn't exactly the best um, for our environment, so yeah, um, I sort of switched to oat milk about two years ago. My grandson who lives with us, he has almond milk, so we have to get that for him, but uh, I'm one of the old school and I just use semi-skin milk. Um, I like coconut when you're doing um, the hot chocolate, but other than that, I for sure. One of milk's main advantages over its new rivals is price. It remains the cheapest choice. But the gap isn't as big as it used to be. The price of milk has risen 35% in the past year, while the price of alternatives rose more slowly. As plant-based products fill shelves that were once the exclusive domain of milk, a war over words has broken out. Dairy groups are calling for the likes of almond milk, plant-based yogurt and vegan cheese to be renamed so consumers don't mistake them for dairy products. The EU has rejected that argument, but the UK is considering it right now. Back on the streets of London, Peter isn't worried about plant products or their names. Although his dairy recently began offering oat and coconut milk directly to coffee shops, he believes cow's milk is here to stay. Charlotte Parsons, CGTN, London. Back here in the U.S., traditional milk consumption has been uh, on the decline over the past few decades. Per capita, on average, uh, the average American drank nearly 16 gallons of milk in, uh, in 2021, which is about 60 liters. And that's down from 29 gallons a person back in the year 1975. Uh, the main reason for the drop is the decline, get this, of cereal consumption in the U.S., but the pandemic has also changed that slightly, with now more Americans eating breakfast again. Consuming cow milk is also considered a very generational thing. The, the boomers, or old people, prefer traditional milk, while young people, we call them millennials and Gen Z, because that's more PC, are opting for plant-based alternatives like oat milk. The main reason the traditional milk industry's impact uh, on the environment is a big deal for them. And for more on the state of the milk industry, uh, Alan Bjerga, Senior VP of Communications at the National Milk Producers Federation. Alan, good to see you. I, I never thought uh, that I would be talking this much about milk. And we had uh, invested in coffee shops, and then I learned about oat milk and coconut milk and all the different milks, the 2%, the non-fat. I, I never wanted to learn this much about milk, but I had to for the business. And fast forward to what we're talking about today, has all these alternatives had a financial impact, I guess, on dairy producers? 
Well, it's been interesting listening to your segment because I feel like I've been listening to a propaganda film for the plant-based beverage industry. Um, <laughs> when you take a look at the overall share of plant-based beverages, which, by the way, are only compared with milk because they are called milk and have some similar uses. Um, the chemical processes are very different, as are the nutritional qualities. You don't see it called milk in the European Union or most places in the world. This is just because the Food and Drug Administration really has not been, in re has not been enforcing its own rules. You take a look about a, a financial threat there have been studies done as far as in terms of this declining fluid milk consumption, which, by the way, this is the big story, that overall dairy consumption in the United States is at a per capita high since 1959. A lot of dairy is being now consumed as cheese, yogurt, and other products, which more than offsets that decline in fluid milk consumption. You know, what you're talking about here is, is the, biggest, the biggest factor in the decline of fluid milk has actually been bottled water. Um, Plant-based beverages fall about five after coffee and tea and, and, and energy drinks. Once again, you know, the reason that people even hack about this debate is, is that plant-based beverage folks have, are trying to purloin dairy terms to, to boost their own market share, creating a false equivalence that unfortunately has some very negative impacts in terms of the consumer health, especially of families who feed kids right. wildly nutritionally inferior beverages. Well, first, let me start with this. Let me clarify. Uh, I assure you, we are not propaganda for the anti <laughs> anti dairy bill. The media don't even realize it, um, you know, because people create these echo loops as far as what's going on with their fair, with the products and and the idea enough. that somehow fluid decline equals decline of dairy, which which simply is just not the case. And I, I'd encourage you to check some of your information and some of the data in your story. I I, I am pro milk. So uh, I do have. Thank you. I do. Happy I do have some. I grew. I grew up on. <laughs> oh, I, I grew up on way too much milk. But here are some charts I'm looking at. Uh, milk production from a dairy perspective is actually up slightly this year than last year. Whether well, the reasons I don't know. Um, but also I have another chart that shows that the price of milk or the futures of milk are actually down, um, which I guess is good for consumers price of butter has gone down. I know there's some post-COVID things going on, but as we referenced in our story, um, breakfast, that is a big deal because when I, I know when I have breakfast, I tend to have more milk. And when I skip breakfast altogether, obviously we skip the milk. I, I'm curious, how much milk is consumed at breakfast time compared to the, the, the rest of the day? You know, I don't know that for specific proportion, but actually you're talking about a very important issue. You know, you talk about those futures being down. Let's also note that school is cutting out of session. And of course, school nutrition programs are very important. You know, that, that traditional breakfast experience where people were having their, their, their milk with that, you know, it, it's been a challenge with milk. By the way, it's been a challenge with orange juice as well. You know, you, a lot of that just traditional breakfast um, combination as people are on the go. It's not happening quite as much. You know, you brought up coffee houses too. You know, back when people were adding their own milk at home and more coffee was drank at home, that, that was different. It was a different culture than what you have now. And, and you know, you talk about the baby boom. It's not necessarily old versus young, but there is a question of proportion here. You know, with an aging population, you simply have demographics that are not having as much milk, which actually tends to be more towards the young. But we have an older society they may like to drink milk, but you know, Gen Z rises, baby boom is falling, and that just leads to a more complex marketplace. So, so my mother, she swears that by drinking a lot of milk, and I mean a lot, I mean like triple the amount a normal person drinks, but drinking milk is good for your teeth, it's good for your bones, you're gonna grow up to be a big strong person. Well, is, is she right? Big drinker of milk. Is she right? Well, we certainly think that, that milk pat has a powerful nutritional punch. I mean, you take a look at some of the 13 essential nutrients that are provided by milk. You know, you're talking about your, your protein. You're talking about your calcium. You're talking about, you know, the vitamin D that is part of the milk as part of the general population. Despite everything that people talk about declining fluid consumption, you know, a lot of folks with plant-based, they're still drinking milk as well. It's still in more than 90% of U.S. refrigerators. And by the way, that's part of what the plant-based folks like to do is they'll, they'll buy their, they'll buy their spot next to the milk in the dairy case to make their products look similar. Okay, Alan, no I got time for one. I, I got time for one more question. Okay, and it sure. has to again do with milk. Um, the folks who like the plant base, 
claim that dairy is somehow bad or something wrong with it. And then the second half of that is when I see the expiration date in the refrigerator and it says June 1st, can I keep drinking it for two more weeks or not? You know, there's a real confusion between sell by and use by. Um, and you'll see those terms on labels. If you see something that is sold by, there's a rule of thumb saying you probably have a few days. But far be it from me to advise anybody what to do in the refrigerator. I have no idea what your temperature setting is in that thing. All right. Um, Alan, really appreciate you uh, coming out uh, on the pro milk team. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you being, appreciate being here. Okay.